Based at Woodchurch High School on the Wirral, Andy Smith has been a physics teacher for seven years. In 2005, he won the teaching award for best secondary teacher in the North West. Science was the only thing I was ever any good at at school. I was good at drama and I liked drama, but you know, no one could be an actor unless you're wonderful. So I wanted something to do with science. I kind of half fancied teaching when I was in school. And then it, I kind of liked it a little bit more when I was in college. And then I forgot about it at university. And then it came to finding a job and I thought, oh, I'll give teaching a go. And I just, I just loved it. I thought, wow, this is definitely, definitely what I wanted to do. Chris, what have you been up to? Um, on Sunday, it was my cousin's birthday. Uh -huh. So I went to her house. And um, did you have a do? The whole family came round. Keith, did you play at the weekend? Uh, yeah, one. Well, I think it was 6-1. What was it? I think it'd be nine Saturday. I used to love going to stay at me now to get spoiled one. And we watched Strictly Come Dancing. Whatever year they're in, they're always working towards something and I want to give them the best chance they can to get towards that something. But science has got such a bad... You know, it's got such a, a bad opinion across the world. You know, women with beards and boring men with pipes and stuff like that. I want, I want to understand that, you know, science is a bit more exciting. Science is not just sitting in a science class doing big hard sums. Science is everywhere. OK, Dave, yes, Peter, yes, sir. Robin, yes, sir. Sharice, yes, sir. Gary, yes, sir. Nathan, yes, sir. Emma, yes, sir. Natalie. It's on one less non lucky, but I was thinking, right, it's important that you don't forget what we did in forces. First of all, go on, Phil, tell me, how, how many loops is that circuit in? It's in one loop, because look, you can follow the current with your finger. Remember last week, good tip that. Follow the current with your finger. So if I put that in now, how many loops is that in now? One. That's still in one, isn't it? We used to have a, a Christmas tree downstairs, and we'd have loads of lights. My dad, well into Christmas, loads and loads and loads of lights. Now our lights were in a series circuit. They were in one loop, and I tell you what, We'd know when one of the bulbs would go because you'd hear my dad's foul language right the way through the house. My poor dad would have to check every single bulb. Can you throw? Let's do it. Okay, right, Joe. So we're going to talk. Keep going, go on. We're going to talk about things that have got energy. We're going to talk about different types of energy and where they get their energy from. Okay, Joe, so this ball here that we are launching through the air at each other, has this ball got energy? Um, yeah. Right, can you think of something else that's got energy because it's moving? Us, we've got energy because we're moving. It's clear, Des. Don't worry about the kit. I'm free after, after break. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up a circuit like that, right, and I've written some information on it, but there's also some gaps on it. And what I'm going to say is this. I'm going to say, A, and all of you together will all say how many volts it will be. So if it's A, you'd all say, like, one volt or two volts all together. Now, if you don't join in, you see, you have to do a solo. If I've got four amps round down there, right, the current in a series circuit is always the same. So if that's four amps, what's that? Four. 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 That's much better. So if that's four amps, what's that? Four. Thank you. Let's try again. You measure voltage with a voltmeter, volt meter, which is easy to use because you just clip it in. in. In about 15 minutes, you're all going to be going out for. Ready. And when I first started teaching, I started watching other teachers and I saw what they do and I saw it work for them. But it's very, very much trial and error. You, you try things. Like my first year of teaching, I, I, was, I, was, I was appalling. I was trying to do so many different things, trying different things until I could see what worked out. And then I got something that I was comfortable with and that the pupils seemed to respond to. So it, it, it's very much kind of evolving all the time. And, you know, maybe in two years' time, I'll be totally different because I will have you know, kind of evolved to be doing, doing something else. Try different things with different classes as well, because not only have you got good ability and bad ability, you've got good behaviour and bad behaviour, and you need to be able to come up with strategies. Good word, that strategies, that's a buzzword, that. You need to come up with, uh, with good strategies to, to, to help focus the different classes and the different children. So just, just try things all the time, and if they work, I'll do them again. If they don't, well, I'll, I'll just leave them. Files and homework, please. There's a boost. My best teacher, he was science, actually, but it could apply to any lesson. I always just remember, every time we'd come in, he'd start teaching, and it, it, it just felt like he hadn't taught another class since us, that we'd left and just come back in, and he was just carrying on. Like, he knew exactly where we were up to. He knew what we could do, knew what we couldn't do. And it was just like, like a, a progression. And I, I used to really admire that, because... Looking back now, I see what he did. He got to know the class really well. He knew exactly what he was teaching and what he had to teach. And I thought that was such a good trait to have. And that's something, you know, I've tried to pick up as well. Mr Cookson is just going to stand there like that, right? And he's going to stand absolutely still 
and he's doing no bother to no one. Now, unfortunately, Mr. Cookson cannot move on his own. He cannot move on his own. He can only move when I shove him about. So at the moment, he's got no kinetic energy. I'm going to give him a little push, and now he's got some kinetic energy. So we're going to turn around, work with me. So we're going to turn around, Mike. Uh, Mike, he's getting some kinetic energy, and he's not now. So I'm going to do some work on Andy. I'm going to work on you, son. I'm going to do some work on Andy. What am I going to give him? I'm going to give him some energy. When he was moving along, he had, say, 30 joules of energy. How much energy had I given him? 30 joules, easy, that's not difficult. Fire, you can't make heat or light. Now that jam packed full of chemical energy, I want to turn it into heat and light. I'm turning it into heat and light. It's giving off heat and light. That mess is turning. The chemical energy is turning into heat and light and eventually it's going to go, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually it's going to go out. Now when it's gone out, it's bone dry. Now why did it stop burning? Mr Smith's lessons like... Fantastic. Yeah, really? they're really exciting. It sounds really stupid that like having to be excited about a physics lesson, but he, like he makes them like so interesting that you you, do, you really don't want to miss it because it's just like if you miss like a tiny point, you like miss part of his. And he spends he must spend hours doing them at home. He must not have like social life at all because he just he does like all colourful questions, doesn't he? It includes like soap yeah. characters. Prepare to give one hundred and ten percent every lesson. Like if you are stuck, he's not like scared to give you support or you go back after school, he'll give you extra lessons. It's like preparation for the lessons as well as like, it's amazing really, he does about 10 sheets a lesson and he doesn't really make you write out loads because you know, he knows it doesn't really do much good, he just gives you the sheet so when you can, like when you've got an exam you can just look over them and revise so it's nice and easy to take in. He's like dead energetic all the time, running about and that so you like can't help but pay attention to him, he's like jumping up and down. Whereas, like, all the teachers just say it from the script, really, so it doesn't stick in. What he does, it makes you, like, remember. So when you're in the exam, if you think you see a question and it's something he's done, you'll remember, like, him like, running along the desk or something like that, and you can think, oh, yeah, it's uh, transverse waves or something. You'll be sitting there in the exam, now, like, doing for hand signals, and everyone, people will be looking at you, like, what are you doing? And, like, they won't be getting the question right, and you will be. I don't know where I come up with ideas from. I just... I try and think of things that will be memorable because there's, you know, there's loads of, especially year 11 physics, there's loads of maths, there's loads of formulas, and I've got to try and make it more accessible to them rather than being so abstract. You have to learn a rule in year 10 about um, the way, way a motor moves. And the first, the first time I saw a kid sitting in an exam with his finger up like that, I had such a sort of surge of warm. Go on, baby. Action! Excellent. That is physics in front of your eyes. You're not looking at a plant with flowers. You're not colouring in a map. That is physics in action. That's There's right. loads of hints and tricks to get pupils to learn. It is hard to learn things in sort of sequences and in order. And to le learning formulas is an absolute swine to learn because you've got loads of them flying around. So you just, just little stupid things, like little rhymes to little formulas are great. Love you, pink animals. Force pressure area. Pizza is a veggie. Power core and voltage. Dirty smelly tramps. Distance, speed and time. Every vic is quiet. Energy voltage charge. Very important rabbit. Voltage, current, resistance. If pupils don't want to learn, you have to say, why don't they want to learn? And they don't want to learn because they've got a negative image of learning. You need to break that whole circle and get them, get them into the mindset that once they come into my room, they are going to learn. They haven't been interested, so they've messed around, so they haven't learned anything. They've got in trouble, they've got a negative image of school. If you can dispel that image and get them to think, you know, maybe I can learn. Wait a minute, I learned last week. I wonder what he's going to do this week, and maybe I'll listen again. So a lot of bad behaviour can be traced back to a negative image of the subject for a kick-off, and just school in general. All government posters for, for cars driving along and hitting small children. The slogan is, kill your speed, not a child. Kill your speed, not a child. If you go slower, you are less likely to kill a child. Why don't they say, oh, have a lighter car? 
why don't they make a big deal about saying, oh, why, why don't like car companies say, do you know, our car is really, really light. So when you hit something, you're less likely to give it loads of kinetic energy. Why is the big drive all about killing your speed? And it's a sciencey reason. Good lad, cause it's squared. If you double your mass, if you get twice as heavy, your kinetic energy is gonna get twice as heavy, isn't it? If you double that number, you double that number there. But if you double your speed there, what happens to your kinetic energy? If you double that number there, because it's squared, what does your kinetic energy go up by? Four. I used to really hate loads of lessons that were just drab and dull and boring. And so I understand where they're coming from. And they come in on a Friday afternoon. They can't be bothered. They're not really interested. So I can see where they're coming from. And I, I just, I'm, I'm with them. I, I want them to know that, you know, I'm on your side here. I know it's rubbish. I know you're tired. I know you can't be bothered. But give me a chance and I'll meet you halfway and then... I'll work just as hard as you work and hopefully we'll get something out of it. Physics in general has got, the, it's, it's just got a really poor image as being incredibly dull and boring. And girls, girls are especially turned off because science in general is a, you know, it's, it's a boys thing. So girls generally underachieve because they're extra not interested, where some of the boys might be slightly interested. So I try not to differentiate between girls and boys, you know, in the slightest. They're just heads sitting there, really. So I had um, seven girls in my physics class last year and now giving A-level physics, which is, which is great. We've never had that before because they were actually interested and thought, hang on, do you know what? Maybe I could do something in my career using physics because it's not just writing down boring numbers and stuff like that. You know, as time goes on, as I, as I try and make it a little bit more accessible, then, you know, I can do my little bit to get girls into physics a bit more. What do you want to do? What do you want to play? Uh, hotties. Hotties. No. Nine. Five, four, three, two, one, go. When you link your circuit up, it's all been... Circle completed. Move! <laughs> Series circuit, how many loops? One. Go. What's the name of the force that pushes you up in water? Point go. What's the name of friction in the air? Irresistance. Go. The current is always there. Two. Tell me the one for speed. Get to more fast. Go. Tell me the one for... Very good. <laughs> if, if, if something's balanced, what can you tell me about the moments? They must be there. Same. Good, like, good answer. Uh, oh. That was well me, that was well me. Now, now, you see, she answered the question, so she was entitled to move. So, it's, uh, it's Nathan, I'm afraid. Loads of teachers ask me, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? I don't know. I'll be. It sounds really boring, but... If in 30 years' time I'm still standing up in front of a class, then I'm really quite happy. I have no aspirations really to be a head teacher because a head teacher doesn't teach. I, I want to teach, I don't want to manage. Bye, bye, guys, I'll see you later. No matter what happens, I'm just I'm happy having a form, teaching X, Y, Z. I'm just happy doing that, really. Yeah.